Okay, hello everyone. So I'm going to talk about drawing the torso this time. And I've kind of noticed this pattern <laughs> with each one of my videos where I start recording the footage and realize that I'm probably biting off more than I can chew and the video starts to become low-key incoherent. <laughs> So I went ahead and I asked my dear patrons over on Patreon what it is that they struggle with when drawing the torso to maybe give me some direction for this video. And so I decided that for this particular video, I'd focus on this comment by the doctor. Shout out to you, bro. I like to call you the doctor. And he says, I feel like I'm still personally struggling with blocking out the torso at various angles in 3D space, especially when the subject is leaning or bending. Your trick with the pillow really helped, and I know that that's kind of vague, but I would love to see that elaborated on. I felt this was a good jumping off point for an introductory sort of video for drawing this particular subject, and so with that, let's just get right into two simple tips for drawing the torso. So the first tip that I want to talk about is always bear in mind your plane changes. This is something that you'd be surprised in how often it's overlooked in beginner artists work and it's that with any form, if it's not intentionally two dimensional, it's going to have plane changes. And so of course the easiest way to demonstrate a form with more than one plane is a box like this. Just by looking at this box we can easily spot three different planes, two of which are this one here and this one here. Now you can call any one of these planes as the front plane, but let's just call this one the front plane. Now let's say for example that I take just that one plane and made that the base for a figure with no other plane changes. You'll see that by doing this, there's only so much I can really do to make this figure look full and three dimensional if the only thing I have to work with is one flat shape. There are going to be a couple aspects that don't quite work out, like for example the upper arms in this drawing are very thin as a result of trying to fit them within that one plane. So here we have our one plane figure. Now, you might actually be looking at this drawing and think to yourself, you know, this doesn't actually look that bad. Right, it reads pretty well, it looks okay proportionately, and while I agree that it looks serviceable, this actually is the stage where a beginner artist can get themselves stuck in a plateau and think that there's nowhere left to go from here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use only one flat plane again, so the same thing as last time, except this time I'm going to add one line within that flat shape where I want there to be a plane change. So in this case the line in black is going to be the center line, and the line in red is going to be where our plane change begins. Now what this does is it gives me a clear idea of where the body begins to go back in space. Right, even though I'm using one flat shape and have the same amount of space to work with as the last figure, adding that one line tells me definitively where the corner of the body is, so to speak. And hopefully you can see already how much easier it is for me to place certain parts of the body like the hip by giving myself more space to work with on the side plane of the body as opposed to having only one plane for the entire front of the body, even though technically the space I have to work with is exactly the same. And if I extend the line all the way down to the feet, you'll see how much space approximately fits within that second plane. This is kind of why it's such commonplace for an art instructor to advise you to simplify the human figure using boxes because a box, like I've said in a previous video, is the king of perspective exercises. The reason of course is because when looking at a box, it's immediately apparent how many planes there are in the form as well as where those planes begin and where they end. This is why using a boxy approach to draw a figure is so useful because it makes your figure immediately three-dimensional in communicating to the viewer where those planes are. And of course it's just as helpful to you who's making the art to be able to make decisive decisions on where those planes begin and where they end.
And so here you can see exactly where the corner of the torso would be in this particular drawing, which also serves to indicate exactly where on that torso there will be a plane change. Which from that information, we can say that wherever there is a corner, there may also be a shift in planes. This leads me to the shape that I most often use for drawing the torso, which is this sort of one piece swimsuit kind of shape. To me, it's kind of like a mix between the bean shape and the box method where the overall shape more closely resembles the bean, but where it relates to the box method is that it also gives me these two corners to work with whenever I need help figuring out where those shifts and planes are going to come from. So in this example, I put down the overall shape I want, identify the corner in that shape, and that tells me where that side plane falls on the torso which just gives me more information to work with when placing the rest of the body. And for me, it's just an overall great shape for the torso because it helps me visualize it through association. I know how a swimsuit looks like on a torso, so by picturing just the swimsuit, it makes drawing the torso a much more digestible task. In this next example, by looking at just the shape alone, you can easily say that these are the two corners of this torso, when actually you can make an executive decision and say that you'd like for the corners of this shape to be right here instead. And so by shifting the viewer's perception of those two corners, you can make an entirely unique pose other than what the shape would have otherwise only allowed you. And so this brings me to my second tip, which is to use cross contours to your advantage. So cross contour lines are basically the lines that you place across the form of an object to create the illusion of three dimensions. The same way you'd place a crosshair on a circle to describe which direction the head is facing, the same concept can be applied to a torso. In this example, I'm gonna have two of the exact same shape like this. You'll see that if I place a cross contour that pushes down and one that pushes up, your perception of these two forms changes according to the direction the cross contour lines are facing. The cross contour plays a big part in communicating to the viewer their perspective of the form that they're looking at. This is how just by using a cross contour, it helps to guide me to two different poses in two completely different perspectives. Here I have two of the exact same shape. If I place a line across it where there is a force pushing up on it, then it will appear as though we're looking up at this bean shape. If I place a line across it where there is a force pushing down on it, then it will appear as though we're looking down on this bean shape. Notice how our perception of this cylinder changes when I shift the direction of the cross contour lines that I use. With nothing but that single line, I'm able to achieve two unique angles for these two torsos. This is basically how I'm able to establish the perspective of a torso even when it's leaning or bending. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to try to replicate this pose with the contour lines of this pose. So here I have the exact same contour lines as the pose on the right. And the point of this is to show you how by using cross contour lines on a form that doesn't match the perspective of the overall pose itself, that it will make the drawing look off, right? The perspective of the figure on the right 
the cross contour lines used to describe that perspective contradict each other and so it will make the drawing look weird and incorrect. Whereas if I erase them and place lines facing the opposite direction, it will match the perspective of the figure and in turn correctly describe said perspective that we're looking at the figure from. This is why cross contour lines can be so helpful when drawing a torso because it tells me two of the most important pieces of information I need for drawing any torso in any angle right from the start. You can see here that I have four of the exact same shape for the torso and just by changing up the cross contour lines within the shapes themselves, it can result in a completely unique pose in a completely unique angle. And so with that, that's going to do it for this introductory video on drawing the torso. Uh, this certainly doesn't cover everything about drawing the torso, but it's just a couple basic uh, fundamentals that help me whenever I approach it. I got more replies on Patreon for what you guys struggle with when drawing the torso, but I figured I could tackle those at a later date. For example, how the torso twists and what that would look like from different angles. Uh, I just didn't want to have such a long gap uh, in between videos just for me personally so that I can maintain a bit of uh, momentum in making these videos and of course so that they aren't like 48 minutes long. Thanks so much for watching as always and I will talk to you next time.